الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله السلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته حياك الله هبت في الله There's a lot of controversy uh, in cyberspace these days and these are old controversies and they are controversies in fact that almost stem from the advent of Islam, meaning from the time of the earliest generations, meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'anu majma'een, with the khuruj, or the going out against the Sahaba, against the Muslim rulers by the Khawarij. And one of these controversies, one of the uh, masail from amongst the many, uh, one of the mas'alas from the many masail, one of the issues from amongst the many issues, is the issue of advising the Muslim ruler. So now we hear a lot of kalam, a lot of speech in cyberspace of people saying, hey, uh, it's okay, brother so-and-so uh, is on Facebook and he's on Twitter and he's yelling and he's screaming and talking about the Muslim leader's sins and he's making tech fear of them and this one's making tech fear of them and she's making tech fear of her. And, you know, we see how this controversy is against the usul of Islam. It's against the usul of the madhab of the salaf. Why do I say these? Are these bold statements? They're bold statements. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم وعطي الله وعطي رسول وقولي الأمر منكم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم O you who believe, obey Allah and obey His messenger and those charged in authority amongst you. Those charged in authority amongst you habit of Allah means the Muslim rulers. And those Muslim leaders, even if they are oppressive sinners. We already know, according to the Madhab of the Salaf, that we don't make khuruj against them. We don't uh, rebel against the Muslim leaders, even though they're even if they're wicked, okay? Even if it's a wicked leader, he's a fasic leader, whatever the case may be. That this is a part of the Madhab of the Salaf, meaning the Salaf came together after a certain time period to uh, establish this asl, this usul from the Madhab. But why? Because the adilla, the strength of the evidence is from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, from Wahi, which Wahi precedes everything else. That the Wahi shows clearly that we don't uh, uh, rebel against the Muslim authority, that this is the base rule. And with that comes the point of advising. And the Prophet wasallam said, Adin al Nasiha. And he mentioned that the religion is sincere advice. And then he said, To the leaders of the Muslims and the uh, general Muslim. So folk. what do we say in reply to those takfiris and others who say, Hey, no, it's okay to make khuruj sometimes. Sometimes it's okay to go if there's a difference of opinion. There's different madhabs of the salaf. It amazes me. This, is amaz this is amazes me. this amazes me when I hear this from people who are learned people, because it shows the lack of dhaqqa. It shows the lack of precision in these masail. And that's why we leave these masail to the mutaqaddimin, the scholars of the past, and the scholars of the present from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah on the same minhads, on the same methodology, to show and look into these masail. Darasa, they take research. Now, the short answer, Ahabitifillah, without getting into all the thing, those who made khuruj, from the Salaf, from the Salaf, were mistaken. Did you say the Salaf were mistaken? I said those who made khuruj, no matter what their manzil, that they made mistakes by making khuruj against the leaders, and the history bears testimony to that, as well as the way Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, when the issue, uh, the issue settled, that it became ijma, that you'll find so many books. Go to Aqidat al go to uh, Shara Sunnah, uh, you know, uh, go to Usul al Sunnah Imam Ahmed, Shara Sunnah Lil Muzni, uh, Usul al Itiqad Lil Al Qa'i, go to uh, As Sunnah uh, Li Ibn Abi Asim. You know, book after book after book after book from the classical scholars saying Ijma. Why would they say this? Because the issue became that way. Please, Tekfiris, understand this. Please, Tekfiris, understand this. And those who are not Tekfiris who want the truth, Understand this, and may Allah bless us and you, and forgive us in you, and guide us in you. Some of the strongest evidence, which is the most important thing, is Dalil. 
It's not my opinion. It's not my scholars. It's not the medchaliyah, as you say, the madachila. All of this battle, those mashayikh, like I'm talking about Sheikh Rabi, because you have a problem with him. This alam is going back to the book in the sunnah in the madhab of the salaf. al kafirun. al ahl bid'a. Even if ahl bid'a hates it, and if the kafirs hate it, it doesn't matter because our usul, minhaj salafiyya, Minhaj Ahlu Sunnati Wil Jama'ah, Minhaj Ahlu Hadith will endure your Facebook post, your Twitters, your tweets, your TikToks will dissipate. They will gone, be gone. Trust me, they will be gone because your predecessors from the Khawarij were other than them. They, their ideology, a woman had to metamorphosize. Why? Because of bida after bida. Mukhalifat after Mukhalifat and Allah did not give Nasr, did not give help and support to those bid'a ideologies. So now listen to this, Habitifillah. Because again, we're going to Dalia. We're not going to, oh, Imam so and so said, oh, our scholar, Mr. Tekfiri in Saudi or Mr. Tekfiri in Egypt or whatever said this, and he says to understand it like this, we're going to give you what our beloved Prophet. Now we have to have that as a base way to go back to. If we don't go back to that, then we're really talking about two different religions. I'm talking about Islam. I'm talking about the usul of Islam. I'm talking about the usul of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, these qawa'id, these usul, these masail that the Salaf of Saleh, Ridwan Allahi alayhim, took as a madhab. And they took it, why? Because the the quwa of the, the strength of the adillah. Qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this is an Iyad ibn Ghanam. Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal man arada in yansa li sultan bi amrin fala yabda luhu alaniya walakin li yakhidh bi yadihi fali yakhlu bih fa in kubil minhu fadak wa illa kana qad ada alladhi alayhi luhu in this hadith in this hadith, dalil, kitab, wa sunnah, wa ijma'a salaf, wa qiyas sahih. Those are the maratib or the levels of evidence in Islam. Not fatwa shaykh so and so, fatwa shaykh so and so, fatwa of mubtidi'a so and so, fatwa of Twitter expert so and so. Iyad ibn Ghanam radiallahu ta'ala he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, whoever wants to advise the Sultan, Sultan is the leader, be emrin with any, with any issue, then do not begin by speaking aloud, meaning don't do it outwardly. However, take him by the hand and basically do it behind closed doors. For if he accepts it, then that is, you know, you've done your wajib. That's, he, it's for him. And if uh, he, he doesn't, then you have done your obligation. This is a hadith. In Musnad Imam Ahmed, Wal Hakam, Wa Ibn Abi Asim in his book, A Sunnah, Wa Tabarani Fi Musnad, Ashamimin and Imam al Albani declared it to be an authentic sun, uh, authentic hadith and made his ta'liqat or his uh, commentary on that in Sunan Ibn Abi Asim. And this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah is a hadith of Rasulullah which supersedes all of your fatwa, all of your opinions. All of your theories, all of your uh, ways of perception, all of your comparisons between slave revolutions and Islam, or the French Revolution and Islam, or uh, the uh, Arab Spring and Islam. Okay, it supersedes that. The taking off of the hijab in Iran, uh, Iran, uh, Iran and Islam. Okay, it supersedes that. Those opinions do us no good, to no avail. Instead, we are restricted to the nas, to the divine text, 
which comes from the tongue of the Prophet ﷺ, which is revelation. One of the things I want to know is why when I see these arguments of everyone with their various opinions, they never give evidence. They always say, well, there's a difference of opinion. Well, scholar so-and-so said in such and such century, and this one said this, and this one, we don't follow anyone in their mistakes. If it goes against the nas, and the nas is sari, the nas is sari, meaning the evidence, the divine text, it's a sound divine text, meaning if it's from the sunnah, the Quran is all sahih, that if it is determined that this is wahi, this is revelation, la yujuz ijtihad mutlaqin, there is no reasoning, scholar, scholarly uh, um, uh, opinion that can contra contravene those nusuls. It can't contradict the divine text. We accept it. Taslim fi kulub. That's the minhaj of the Salaf. That's why, that's what we're calling to. That's what we're exalting. That is a method we can't play with. So, we see that that is the case. Now, let's see what have Hafid, uh, or let's look at another narration. Just, just one more. وَعَنْ أَبِي وَائِلْ قَالْ قِيلَ لِي أُسَامَ بِنْ زَيْدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَعَنْ لَوْ أَتَيْتَ عُثْمَانْ فَكَلَمْتُهُ قَالْ إِنَّكَ لِتَرَوْنَ أَنِّي لَا أُكَلَّمُهُ إِلَّا أَسْمَعَكُمْ إِنِّي أُكَلَّمُهُ فِي سِرْ دُونِي إِنْ أَفْتَهَ بَابٍ لا أكون أول من فتحه. This is a narration of Habit of Allah in Bukhari and Muslim. In Bukhari and Muslim, we shouldn't have a problem about that. I don't care what, if you take from so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. This is Ruahu Shaykhan. This is Mutafakun Ali. So in this narration, in this hadith, in this athar, the athar of Abi Wa'il, radiallahu ta'ala, he said, it was said to Usama bin Zayd, if you went to Uthman and spoke to him, you know, basically, if only you went to him and spoke to him. So the people were encouraging to speak to the leader, to the Khalifa, about some issue that they saw that they felt was a mistake or was, in, was some issue that they needed to address. How did they deal with it? They asked him, speak to him. What did he say? Qal, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَرَوْنَ أَنِّي لَا أُكَلَّمُهُ إِلَّا أَسْمَعْكُمْ You people think because you don't see me speaking to him that I've not uh, spoken to him unless you hear of it. Meaning that you have to hear it. You have to, it has to be authenticated. How many takfiris ridicule the ulama of Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah because they say they don't correct the leaders. They don't advise the leaders. They're not making takfir of the leaders. They're not calling out the oppression of the leaders. How many? That is the madhab other than the madhab of Ahlus Sunnah. This was said to the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So he said, what did he respond? He said, Inni ukellamuhu fi sir. Verily, I speak to him behind closed doors. Duni and afta babin, instead of opening up a door. Because I will not be the first to have opened it. What door is that? That's the door of the khawaris. That's the door of the tikthir. Uh, theater. Meaning, when you open the door of speaking against the leader and supposedly calling yourself advising the leader by making enkar of them and talking about their sins publicly, that you have now opened the bab, a dangerous door, a door of fitna. Is this Khalid Green in the Medhali's uh, opinion again? Well, let's see what Hafid ibn Hajar says about this. قال حافظ بن حجر رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة قال المحلم أراد من أسامة أن يكلم عثمان وكان من خاصته ومن من يختلف عليه في شان الوليد ابن عقبة 
لأنه كان ظهر عليه ريح النبيذ وشهر أمره وكان أخا عثمان لأمه وكان يستعمله فقال أسامة قد كلمته سرا دونيا أفتح بابا أي باب الإنكار لأئمة العلانية خشية أن تفرق الكلمة So the shahid, the main point here We'll give you the, instead of translating all of it, and for those who know Arabic, you, you, you'll understand, you'll be able to go to the text and see and check my translation if you have a problem. So, Hafid ibn Hajar, Rahmatullahi uh, Rahmatin Wasiya, says in Fath al-Bari, he mentions that they wanted uh, Usama to speak to Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And that was because he was very close to him. And that they, the people, that they differed over the issue of Walid ibn Uqba because he had, you know, a scent, meaning a scent of khamr, that they, you know, maybe he was, they thought he was drinking alcohol, or whatever the case may be, or he was drinking alcohol, okay, or drunk. Uh, so he had the smell of that, that alcohol. And his issue was, was well known, okay, it was a well known issue meaning that uh, of his uh, his conduct. And he was the uh, brother of Uthman. So basically we've translated the whole thing uh, on, on his mother's side. And he uh, used to, Uthman radiallahu ta'an, used to use him for, you know, certain tasks, maybe in military campaigns, whatever the case may be. Okay. And then, so Fakala Usama, Usama then said, I spoke to him quietly instead of opening up the door. Meaning the, the door of fitna, as we said. I, what does Hafid ibn Hajar said? Because it's not mine in the Medkhali's uh, opinion or the, 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 whatever. <laughs> well, I'm saying, he said, I, bab and kar al al-a'immat al-alaniya. He said, this door, what's the door that should not be opened? This is the door that shouldn't be open. Why? How do we understand that from the from the hadith, from the narration? Because Imam Hafid ibn Hajar, as, as we can see from the Nas itself, but Hafid ibn Hajar says, I the meaning of this is that this the door of uh of of making a uh public uh enkar, a public um uh speaking against the leaders openly out of a fear of dividing the uh, dividing the Muslims, meaning m causing disunity. Now, there are other narrations we could go to, but that should suffice us. That right there illustrates the method of the Salaf. That the Salaf, as far as uh, an exception of speaking uh, and making the inkar, inkar publicly would be if the leader is in front of you, bi hudur al al sultan. If the leader is in your uh, in your you're in a gathering with the leader, the leader all of a sudden says, alcohol should be uh, lawful in our country. Okay, and you're a scholar or whatever there present. Under this situation, with of course respect, that you would advise the leader openly in that gathering. But it's not for you to go. You hear this thing and then you go on the social media out, outposts and outlets. Or you leave the gathering and you're yelling from the rooftops. Or you're doing it in the khutbah speaking about the leader. Why? Because the Salaf were very concerned about. And of course what shows us from the Nasus, from the Quran and the Sunnah that spreading, that this is a source of fitna. This is a source of disunity to speak uh, and uh, criticize the rulers. And especially if there is no Sharia-based maslaha, there's no Sharia-based objective, meaning you can't criticize them openly because you think that there's a, a, um, a Sharia-based maslaha. No, there's not never a maslaha. The, the hakam of country X is not listening to you on Twitter. 
And even if he is, you are you have no manzu, you're not in his circle to be able to advise him. We need those people to advise him according to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, advise him, sirrin, behind closed doors. So I hope that that is clear, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And may Allah tafarak wa ta'ala protect the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the sharr of the takfiriyun. Wal khawarij. Wa kullu ahl al-bida'i wa dalal. Wa kuffar wa murtiddin. Ameen.